One of the most quoted and remembered lines from Parks and Recreation comes from season three's episode, Flu Season. When trying to help, Leslie figure out what she has. Andy types her symptoms on the computer, but doesn't do it right. So he delivers this famous quote. Leslie, I, I typed your symptoms into the thing up here and it says you could have network connectivity problems. That line was improvised by Pratt and it was too good not to keep it. This is probably the single funniest moment in the history of television. It says you could have network connectivity problems. In the Titanic movie, there's this memorable scene where Kate Winslet's character spits in Billy Zane's face. <laughs> the interesting twist is that Winslet came up with the idea, and only she and director James Cameron were in on it. When it went down during filming, Zane's reaction was totally real, and that unscripted moment ended up making it into the final cut. I said no! Before T.J. Miller got arrested by the FBI, the actor delivered plenty of deadpan one-liners in the 2016 movie Deadpool. One of the most iconic moments occurred when Ryan Reynolds went to Miller's character for help concerning his face, and Miller delivered this iconic line which was improvised on the spot. You look like an avocado. Had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. Yeah. During a scene from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, where Jim Carrey rips the tablecloth off the table, all of these plates and dishes were supposed to fly off the table as well. But Jim Carrey accidentally succeeded in physics and perfectly removed the cloth without damaging anything. So him going back to the table and knocking everything over was completely improvised. During the filming of The One with Phoebe's Uterus on Friends, Matthew Perry fluffed his lines after Joey walked in wearing a blue blazer. I don't know, but Donald Trump wants his blue blazer black. <laughs> what? Blue blazer back. They made the right choice, leaving it in, even though it was unscripted. Donald Trump wants his blue blazer black. <laughs> Whenever a cab gets too close, I can't help but shout, <laughs> You know, that Dustin Hoffman line from Midnight Cowboy. It turns out that a cab driver ignored the filming signs and almost ran into Hoffman and his reaction, still in character, became the iconic line that many of us still say today. During the Jamie Foxx show's Traffic School Days episode, the entire cast burst into laughter when Mark Curry, playing the instructor, slid and almost tripped as he ran toward the front of the room. The problem, it was square. I did not ask you to stay in the big ball. The fact Jamie and all the extras broke character after Curry slipped, and the director decided to keep it in the final cut, just goes to show how raw these unscripted moments were. I did not ask you to stay in the big ball. Do you remember that famous necklace scene in Pretty Woman? Turns out it wasn't even in the script. Richard Gere, being the spontaneous guy he is, decided to snap the necklace case shut on Julia Roberts' hand on a whim. Oh! <laughs> Her reaction was so genuine and full of laughter that the directors just had to keep it in the movie. Oh! <laughs> in a hilarious moment in Avengers Infinity War, Star-Lord demands Tony to tell him about Gamora when Tony has no idea about the character. Where is Gamora? Yeah, I'll do you one better. Who's Gamora? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? The script was supposed to end with Robert Downey Jr.'s line, Who is Gamora? But Bautista embodied Drax and added it in. I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Robert De Niro deserves full credit for his jaw-dropping performance in Taxi Driver, not just because of his acting, but also because he came up with the iconic line on the spot. You talking to me? You talking to me? The fuck do you think you're talking to? So in Princess Diaries, Anne Hathaway is doing this scene where she's supposed to walk on bleachers with her friend. Well, she ends up taking a not-so-graceful tumble. It works so perfectly with her clumsy character that they decided to keep it in the movie. In The Office, when Michael wanted to show he was cool with Oscar being gay, they first planned for a hug. But after a few tries, the writers and the director agreed that the scene was missing something. Steve Carell said he had it covered, and the next take was the one that made it into the show. In the first Captain America, Haley Atwell almost touching Chris Evans's chest wasn't scripted. She was just that impressed and they kept that take in. While Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight seemed flawlessly rehearsed, it's surprising to learn that many of his scenes were improvised. 
One notable instance was when Ledger spontaneously started clapping inside the jail. Little did anyone know that this impromptu act would become one of the most iconic scenes in the movie. During the filming of The Usual Suspects, the scene where they were in the lineup was supposed to be a very serious scene. The guys were supposed to be very stoic, very impressed, and unintimidated. Give me the fucking keys, you fucking cocksucker motherfucker! Knock it off, get back! The actors said they were cracking up because one of them was farting during filming. However, the fact that the actors could not keep straight faces at that moment resulted in a happy accident that helped the film continue to be a crowd pleaser. I mean, the fucking keys, you cocksucker, what the fuck? <laughs> in Spider Man Homecoming, when Tony and Peter are sitting in the back of Tony's car, he reaches over and Peter thinks it's for a hug. Tony very nonchalantly says to him, That's not a hug, I'm just grabbing the door for you. We're not, we're not there yet. According to Holland, that move was totally improvised because he thought it would be funny to try and do it. That's not a hug, I'm just grabbing the door for you. We're not, we're not there yet. In Rocky, when he runs through the Italian marketplace, the amused expressions on people's faces are genuine because they had no idea why a man was running back and forth followed by a van. The man who threw him the orange was completely improvised at that moment. Robert Downey Jr., who plays Iron Man in The Avengers, always took it upon himself to shoot scenes with the addition of snacks. At one point, he even brought enough snacks for everyone when they were about to shoot a scene. It got to the point where the director just had eating snacks be part of Robert's character. So all the Tony Stark eating scenes are probably not scripted. You ever tried shawarma? I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. In Lucky Number Slevin, there's a scene where Lucy Liu's character accidentally walks in on Josh Hartnett, who is totally naked. It took you long enough. In the original script, that part wasn't supposed to happen. But as a joke, Josh took the towel off just as Lucy walked in, flashing her. The director liked Lucy's genuine reaction so much that he kept the shot in the final movie. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Emma Watson punching Tom Felton was part of the script. It was initially planned to be shot in a way that her fist appeared close to but missed his face. However, Tom Felton encouraged Emma to do it properly, thus making it more realistic. Oh. Oh. I bet your mama got some big titties. <laughs> What makes Martin's bloopers so funny is that the best of them usually made it in the actual episodes. The cast breaks more than SNL, but it only enhances the ridiculous comedy the series is known for. One of my favorites is Martin continuously ruining the scene by singing Montel Jordan's This Is How We Do It at the height of its popularity. Gotta get your groove on. Gotta get your groove on. It was so funny that the rest of the cast referenced the outtake in the actual episode. <laughs> 